have 60 seconds to comply. I think you'd better do what he says, Mr. Kenny. You have 60 seconds to comply. This is minute 70, part man. Part machine. All part. <laughs> this minute begins with... And it's not fucking loading. Cool, cool, cool. This is... <laughs> <laughs> my uh, computer, I don't know if you know, I'm using my mum's and it's fucking shit. Come on. This is why I have paper notes. They don't take as fast to, well, don't take as slow to download. Yes, come on. Oh my god. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Yeah, once again, I gotta <laughs> I have to send you guys the picture of my notes. They're, they're, they're nuts. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like the way Alan oh. Moore writes a script for... Uh, it's essentially... <laughs> For any it's, of his it's, comics, it's, apparently it's just... It's yeah. not too dissimilar from the actual look of his comics, actually. <laughs> well, he is a wizard, so I'm sure he's, like, writing it, it do, backwards it does and feel, spiral. It does feel and... like in hell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we fucking go. Now I can see it. Oh, I'm go. keeping all of this in now. <laughs> this minute begins with Robocop being tossed through a wall and ends with Ed 209 having a temper tantrum. And we have a guest. And we are joined today by Josh, my mate, who hasn't got a podcast of his own, but definitely an uber nerd, very knowledgeable, mostly about B-grade movies, martial arts ones in particular. He recently introduced me to Ninja 3. It was pretty great. But hello, Josh. Hello there. Welcome to the pod. Oh, thank you for having me. This is this is my uh, first, I I should say. Oh, wow. We've got a newbie. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully Podcast virgin, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I didn't want to go that far, but... <laughs> <laughs> I was desperately holding it back. <laughs> I, I guess given one of the pictures of your t-shirts uh, you've sent to our group chat, you wanted this minute. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, oh, yeah. I bought this shirt even though I knew no one was going to see it. <laughs> like, I am wearing it right now. <laughs> nice. Excellent. We're proud. We're very proud. I'm still wearing my Batman t-shirt from last night, because, uh, <laughs> yes. Finally saw that one. So, yeah, this is... I am disappointed that there was no tie-in Ed 209 merchandise, uh, particularly, as we've mentioned before, the microphone. <laughs> would have been a great microphone oh, that stand. that would have been actually really nice. Well, it's funny because this movie didn't really have merchandise. Like, uh, no. it was really, like... I know at first. Well, no, it was really after, like, Robocop 2 when they started merchandising. That's when they realized, wow, kids like this film. They shouldn't. They shouldn't be watching it. Did they not have an action figure? I feel like there was an action figure because I had one as a child. I don't recall. I know there was a lot of bootleg stuff. It was it was Uh, one no, we got it at Toys R Us. It was one that that had like I don't know if you guys remember caps, the the little roll of paper that has the the, the, Yeah. So you could you could put that in in the back of Robocop and his helmet came off and everything and you'd pull the trigger Hmm. And, and it would make a shooting noise. So you could literally, it was an action figure that you could shoot with. And that's America. Yeah. Welcome to America, folks. <laughs> that's amazing. So there may have been RoboCop 1. I, 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 I recall. I mean, it could be RoboCop 2. I, I, I don't remember. I just remember I was very young and probably too young to be watching the film. No, there was this, like, really weird time in toy manufacturing during the 90s where... They were just taking horror movies, like, specifically Robocop, Aliens, and I even think Predator, and making children's toys out of them. It was buck wild. We will, we will be discussing a lot of that stuff, actually. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's all in my notes. It's all in my notes, yes. Um, but, yeah, there was... Yeah, I, there they actually still do... There's a point where we will make... Toys or video games out of any movie. Uh, I don't yeah. know if you've ever played the Platoon NES game, but that's a thing. No. Yeah, that's a thing. <laughs> I know there was a Platoon game for the Commodore 64, and that's the one I played. I think it's probably it's probably the same game. <laughs> probably. It was probably better than the uh, Commodore 64 one, because that was uh, uh, unnavigable. It was just... I don't know what the hell they I were think, doing. I think... But... So... Josh, what was your history with RoboCop? Keeping it focused. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, sorry. My history with RoboCop is actually uh, I watched it when I was let's see, that's 1987. Probably didn't come out uh, to home movies for another year, so I would have been like eight or nine, probably. 
Oh, yeah, probably the same age as me then. The prime age yeah, to watch. Yeah, that was yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the perfect age well, to watch for I can remember. I think around that time, that was the the era of the latchkey kid, and I was very much a latchkey kid. Uh, both my parents worked. <laughs> I think my cousin would babysit me, and even then, they didn't really care that much in terms of what I saw <laughs> or or. It's like the more the more restrictions you put on it, the more I'd want to watch it anyway. So it's just uh, they just didn't bother. <laughs> and I turned out okay. Yeah, it's got a robot man on the front cover. How how bad could this be? Look, I don't even want to get into the to how old I was when we were watching. How old my sister was when we watched Pulp Fiction. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> I, I I guess um, Pulp Fiction is very adult in its own way. It's not quite as hyper gore, but there is some very disturbing imagery in that movie yeah she was very much well at least she was in the double digits when she saw it i'm pretty sure i think <laughs> uh, i don't remember <laughs> i actually didn't see that movie in cinemas until i was like about five or six years ago because it finally had a big cinema review i was like i've got to watch this oh, in yeah. the cinema. i i don't think i watched any of the robocop movies in the cinema and that's kind of a regret i have i think i would at least yeah, I would. Oh, I'd love to do that. I've seen three in the cinema, and if they rescreen it, we got to get our OCP <laughs> yes. police uniforms done for that. Definitely. Yeah, um, there is like uh, in Perth, there is like some retro cinema releases, and I've been keeping an eye out to see if there's been a RoboCop uh, one. Well, we have that. We have that too. I actually just took my my children uh, to watch Transformers the movie. Oh shit! What are we gonna do now? In the the theaters. Yes. Oh wow. Yeah. Oh, that yeah, would be was, great on the big screen. Amazing. That is a great yeah. freaking movie. You know what? And it's the first time I've seen that movie in the theater since um, all that traumatizing uh, crying uh, and uh, you know all the children running out. Uh, why did not Optimus Prime turn gray? Guys? Why? What's going on? Oh, I, I mean, I, I, I still don't care how I turn gray, but yeah, that was legit. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah. On Cybertron, pigments come from uh, yeah. <laughs> Energon. So if Energon's more circulating. Exactly. There's, there's no color in anything. <laughs> oh, that would actually probably make a lot of sense than you just turned uh, Yeah, black. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is it there like an evil nemesis frame? I think it is. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, now, now we've gotten back. We're, here we go. <laughs> I mean, they... Welcome to Transformers by a minute. Uh... They literally just went, let's just paint Optimus Prime Stop. white, stick shit on him, Thank and new character. You, I had that action yeah. figure, and by the way, immediately, you lose all the pieces. The gloves, yeah. the, the, head, the, the head was the, the only thing I had left. Yeah. And, and after that, I was like, I just want the white Optimus Prime, it looks cool. He does, actually. Um... It's, it's Optimus Prime in heaven, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Optimus the white, Optimus the grey, Optimus the black. Oh, we're going to be in so many tangents because I was going to say when they painted Optimus gold in the cartoon to negate the oh, fear God. virus bullshit when they re re returned, like, oh, okay, okay, <laughs> Robocop! <laughs> Robocop. Anyway, so Robocop, uh, <laughs> well, actually, Ed, I want to wear Ed 209 because. I just, I love the way he's, he's kind of gingerly putting his foot onto yeah. the stairs, going, what? What is this? I don't... <laughs> so, we got this whole fight going on with Robocop and Ed 209, and it's... it's I like that it's kind of clunky. It's clunky, it's comedic, yeah. but it's intense, yes, too. Yeah. I love... We've talked about this a lot, that Robocop has this amazing ability to juggle multiple tones at once. Mm. Agreed, yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, going back to how you're thinking... With the movie so what was your initial thoughts like uh especially coming up to a scene like this where it's like as a kid did you kind of get some of the nuance or were you just like oh, cool robot fight um probably at eight or nine no i did i did i actually had <laughs> I, I get very upset at movies as a child, so seeing Robocop uh, getting the shit kicked out of him was uh, yeah. devast was devastating to oh, me. Yeah. Especially this is the I think this is the first time we really show I mean, he's had moments where he's memor remembering his past, but this is the first time we actually see him not at an advantage at all. Um and look also genuinely yes. scared. Um the more of more of those emotions coming out and, mm. and and to see a stoic figure like that like look scared terrified me as a kid <laughs> yes hmm 
we've got like two or three minutes worth of Robocop's basically fall from Ascension. Yeah, so and, like, and, and actually damn. what it did too is it made Ed 209 that much more badass. Even though if you really think about it, he doesn't really do yeah. too much in the scene. He kind of just, he, he shoots a couple of rockets and then he falls down the stairs. But man, how amazing is that? <laughs> It's okay. Daleks have long been defeated by stairs. Hey, hey, they're well. yeah. they have <laughs> the crap out of them. <laughs> uh, oh uh, yeah, it's can... like ha ha, yeah. bitch! I can exactly. float. <laughs> well, it's funny because it was actually 1987 when, during the Sylvester McCoy era, when they actually did the whole floating Dalek uh, that stuff. Is, that is correct. I do. I actually I, in my. In my notes of of famous movie monsters that can't handle stairs, yes, that is that is there, and yes, I do have mm. notes for that. <laughs> I think it was Remembrance of the Daleks. I bel- yes, yes. Mechanically, it would have been really difficult, but I love those sort of treads that can climb upstairs. The adaptable. Yeah. I don't know what they are. Yeah, it is called. actually not. Oh. It, it's that not that uncommon no to idea. have like the villain like not being able to go upstairs or or actually because. I know specifically in like a lot of Hong Kong movies in certain, especially in, with like ghosts or the Chinese vampire, Chinese vampires don't Hopping walk. vampires, they, yeah. So if oh, they have, if, there are, there are moments Hop. where if there's a very <laughs> large step, they will not be able to get up it. And, and also <laughs> ghosts glide. Hmm. Well, it's a it's a great thing for horror because it's uh, it adds tension, like the whole idea of yeah. will they won't they get them? You know, it's uh, it's a and it works well in this as well. Yeah, I think you could kind of draw a comparison between Ed Two O Nine and a lot of traditional monsters and folklore that they have one really obvious weakness. I love that <laughs> within our own fears culturally, we always build in. Uh, you know so something you can do to save yourself there's always something a ritual yeah. uh or a strategy we always build that into all monsters i don't think there's any monster especially in folklore and mythology that don't have a specific kill switch apocalypse from the x-men well this is part of uh character building you need a weakness mm. for them to be defeated like it's it's almost it's fine to have the unstoppable killing machine monster in horror but you have to find a way to defeat mm. them, else uh, you don't have an end of a movie. Yeah, yeah. I guess even when we talk about folklore, then yeah, it, we it, we're still telling a story with a beginning, middle, and end sort of thing. So it's like, okay, well, hopping vampire, <laughs> well, uh, stairs. You know, it's just built into or regular vampires. Uh, so, you know, just you have to invite them inside, or you know, over the years we just added more and more and more things to the vampire. <laughs> The inviting inside is 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 an interesting one. It's because I'm like, like, okay, then just stay in your house and don't get out. Okay, cool. I'll just, I'll, I guess, I'll just Uber everything and just. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh man. Oh, I'm vampire proof. I have so baby. much I'm vampire house. proof. You're not coming in here. <laughs> the one exception is actually werewolves. For the longest time, well, werewolves were sort of a, a deviation of vampire. They weren't really strictly yeah. separate. So that means that for the longest time when we once well once we separated the werewolf from the vampire, the werewolf didn't really have specific weaknesses until the Lon Chaney oh. Wolfman. When they were writing that script, they're oh. like, Okay, so what do you use to defeat a vampire? Um the werewolf and they went, Um Nothing? There's really nothing specific in the folklore. It, t- it doesn't tell you how to deal with it, other than if it's a skin changer, you take the fur away so they can't turn into the animal again but this the wolfman doesn't mm. work like that so then they had so wait a, a, sh- a good shave will we'll stop <laughs> i guess so yeah so uh, sponsored by Gillette. all oh, man, so. of the weaknesses that we associate with modern <laughs> werewolves are, are only about a century old they only date back to the wolfman mm-hmm. huh yeah it's fun how um those kind of things change and evolve over time mm. yeah hmm Hmm. Did not know yeah, that. silver no, works on most monsters. That's why the Witcher has a silver sword. Iron is well, specifically for fairies, so that's another I, weird I, connection. I, I only know that because of Disney's gargoyles. <laughs> I know because of Hellboy 2. <laughs> well, silver 
has always been thought of as like a pure metal, and that's usually where the mythology comes from. As it's 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 really not. And Judas betrayed Jesus for three pieces of silver or whatever it was. So yeah, that yeah. But like it's supposed to be like this pure metal thing, and that's why uh, in vampire lore, it's not that mirrors don't work on vampires. It's because mirrors used to be made from silver. Uh, so it doesn't reflect. Uh, same with the original film stock. It's made from silver nitrate, so you couldn't take a photo of a vampire. Digital photography, uh, well, at least now vampires can see what they look like, and most mirrors are now made of aluminium, hmm. so not, not yeah, silver. Yeah, you can have mirrorless cameras. Vampires can finally see what they look like after thousands of years. <laughs> and and what, what movie are we watching is about a man who's completely wrapped in metal. So there yes, you go. there you go. Yes. It's, all circle. <laughs> it's all connected. It's all connected. <laughs> yeah, so I guess he is invulnerable to uh, vampires and fairies. It's good to know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. That's, that's amazing. Yeah. Now I just want to see that movie. <laughs> Oh god! I love genre mashing. So yeah, taking the yeah. principles of oh, yeah. this real science fiction character, then shoving them into a fantasy world, which the original series of Star Trek tried to do, but <laughs> well, shit, it's exactly what I was hoping to spare you from. <laughs> oh god! Mixed results. I remember that episode. The Allison wants to land one with the fuck. Yeah. <laughs> when McCoy oh, dies and is magically better. <laughs> This episode's going to be a fucking train I, wreck. It's just yeah, three yeah. uber nerds with way too much to connect this to. Well, we've got in Transformers, we've got in Star Trek. I'm not going to mention any other drops we can throw in because I know it's just going to set you yeah. off. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll take, I'll take you anywhere you can go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my main note for this minute is that it's ironic that the robot made for police use squeals like a pig. Uh, yeah, that was actually a note I've got for the next minute. <laughs> yes, that is the last, that is literally the last note that I have. Is, <laughs> this is not the first movie that Ronnie Cox has been in where somebody <laughs> squeals like a pig. <laughs> uh, they actually, they actually bring that up in the commentary notes. Uh, is that that is actually a pig sound uh, that was sourced deliberately? I'm not sure it was deliberately for pigs, but uh, for the thing, but it's a squeal. Although to quickly go into the commentary notes, it's funny because uh, they do mention that uh, the reaction is supposed to be basically a, cr a crazy, angry child who doesn't get it. Yeah, yeah, it looks like a tantrum. <laughs> Yeah, so that brings me to my question that I wrote. Does Ed Two Hundred Nine have feelings? There was some, there was some apprehension. Well, we've, we've well. been thinking about this lately. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there was some apprehension on him. He almost looks scared to walk down the stairs. Uh, usually, usually that doesn't happen when you talk, when we're talking about robots. Yeah. Um, also, robots tend not to scream and kick their legs around and and throw a tantrum <laughs> when they fall. But you know, that's neither here nor there. I wonder if Dick Jones deliberately made that as part of his uh, his programming. What if uh, he actually has a pig brain in there? So instead of a human in Robocop, we've got uh, got the pig. Ooh, that, there you go. I did posit it was a dog brain, but a pig brain could That's be. why it's making that sound. Um, the, yeah. the animal noises for robots or machines, I don't know hmm. where that starts. I mean, from the top of my head, I'd probably say Star Wars, because you got, mm. you know, I think it's the AT-ATs and the chicken walkers and the even, I oh. think, uh, mm. oh, the X-Wings? Maybe. <laughs> the, the... <laughs> Tie fighters, uh, tie fighters yeah that's an elephant sound and they also use that as airwolf uh that's that kind of pitch down screechy i did i did notice i actually did notice that from airwolf because as a child that was a very specific noise that i thought sounded like a person throwing up very very loudly like like just very with a lot of force just just <laughs> Like that, that kind of <laughs> <laughs> well, you've ruined Airwolf for me. Thank you. <laughs> it's Jan Michael Vincent throwing up after a hangover, and that's uh, just yeah. just have a nice, nice, nice bender. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm gonna give, give you props because the only per person I could <laughs> remember in Airwolf is Ernest Borgnine. Well, I have been watching it lately, and uh, check out the Airwolf Years podcast. Uh, with my nice mates plug. Dave and Gregory Klein, so yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've been on the show before. Uh, once I was in disguise as Archangel. So <laughs> I remember that picture. Those pictures, actually. 
God. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, another note I've got here is uh, because I think this is one of those weird things going back to a movie like this is that because it, a lot of this stuff was done practical, we don't think of like, oh yeah, those are real rockets. I mean, they obviously weren't have explosions on, but yeah, they were like properly guided rockets on a guide wire. That's the only way you could achieve a shot like that is uh, with the models and that. I love so that look. It's... I think a lot. Of, there's actually, yeah, it, it looks it looks so much better. Yes. <laughs> the the, th- the thing that the thing that I noticed that I have big bold letters is, um, when they set off the uh the explosion, the stunt man that was in the RoboCop suit was a good like five feet away and it wasn't a, it wasn't a dummy it was moving uh and they did it twice i'm like I yeah i think that they would allow them to do that anymore oh yeah i i reckon these stunt guys must have been paid extra danger money considering some of the shit they were getting away with in these particular minutes it takes a particular kind of mindset to be a stunt man i think yeah yeah this is this feels this feels like the throwback to like the yeah the 70s or the, or the stunt men were just like like the man you know <laughs> yeah yeah it's like oh you want me to jump over that oh it's on fire oh yeah fucking whatever yeah yeah sure that's fine that's a... <laughs> well there's a scene earlier on in the movie with the gas station explosion and there's a guy there's a camera operator like literally in a um fireproof blanket like right next to that uh explosion getting footage so even the cameraman were not immune mm-hmm. the mean the meantime paul rohov is just on 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 the on the loudspeaker <laughs> get closer closer <laughs> to to be fair i think that was mostly second unit <laughs> so he, <laughs> he was probably off being weird and dutch somewhere else <laughs> Oh goodness! The whole practical uh, elements of this film is just like, I think it helps the scenes so much. Is just the, you know, Phil yeah. Tippett's animation there is just the the fact that they use traditional stop motion really helps, and I think that's on mm. purpose. That that it really helps with the 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 jerkiness makes it far more yeah. robotic. Um, like because they could have. Oh, actually, no, they couldn't because they couldn't afford it. They could have used the the, the go motion, which is what Phil Tippett was supposed to do for Jurassic Park. I was Park. wondering if it was go mm. motion because it's got a bit of a blur to it. I think I think they either added Vaseline to the lens or they bump. There's a couple different ways you could bump the table or or move the puppet slightly, but uh, I, it looked a little bit like schmeary mm. <laughs> to me. I I don't know for sure though. Uh they haven't mentioned it in the. Uh commentary notes but good segue because they did actually say they did actually specifically mention phil tippett in regards to uh the stairwell scene was originally just scripted as ed walks in doesn't know what to do falls down that was like the notes uh but it was actually phil tippett and his crew that actually added all that dimensionality to ed 209's character like the apprehension the uncertainty and it's telegraphed in exceptionally well in just those few moments and it's got some good breathing movement that's what i love about uh, filmmaking as a process where you're writing a yeah. script and you just go oh well and then a fight scene happens but then <laughs> someone who you know a choreographer who who lives and breathes this sort of thing physicality they yeah. they think about storytelling in a visual physical sense they can come in there and really enhance the story in a way that you as a script writer never could because you just don't have the language for that. Well, typically in script writing, you're not really supposed to describe action in, in cer- most circumstances. It's mostly about dialogue and setting. Oh, yeah, but I'm pretty sure, yeah, the screenwriter or the director on their own, you know, they're very talented hopefully Hmm. but um (laughs) you know even at their best a director or a screenwriter generally doesn't have a brain for animation or a brain for action uh choreography or whatever it is Hmm. you know they know roughly what they want but the people who actually work specifically in that department they'll be able to take it to places they never would have thought of that that drives me nuts when when I see it's like oh this looks like this is done by somebody who is not experienced by yeah. at all <laughs> yeah 
when I was studying uh, directing and screen production a few years ago, uh, part of me wanted to learn everything I could about every department just because I wanted to know what I could. So, but I know enough about myself to go, no, let somebody else do that. At least I know enough now to where I can get it to function. Yeah, know enough to know that you're not an expert. I think that's exactly. a good place to be. You yeah. can communicate yes. to those departments, but you can't, you know, work them like a puppet. You just have to let them do their thing. Exactly. That's exactly right. And I think uh, that's where you get some great directors who are just like, yeah, I, I've got a vision. I'll just let other people do it. And But yeah, I don't think you really get too many micromanagers in big projects. I think a lot of... Uh, directors know enough that they can't do everything yeah i don't think the current market has room for stanley kubrick's anymore i don't think we'll get another person like that we know stanley was doing 75 takes (laughs) the budget has expanded like like tenfold okay cool cool, guys yes great great yeah but kubrick would like reshoot the simple scenes simple shots a buttload of times because oh was... yeah, it's freezing or it's really really hot and it's just yeah no keep going we haven't got the perfect take. Oh no, it's not a perfect take if it's a female actor. If it's a male oh, actor, yeah, she's not a yeah. perfect take. Oh, Funny God, that. Yeah, it's like it's, it's so hard to watch that. Yeah, that's a uh, whole other tangent. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, uh, we'll be talking about this. Listen for hours. to the Shining yeah. minute. Yeah. If there isn't a movie bit by minutes on of a thing, yo, go ahead and take yeah. it. <laughs> You know what I've actually noticed too. Like Ed Two Hundred Nine usually gets the, you know, usually gets the whole. Oh, he can't walk downstairs. Did anyone notice that um, RoboCap can't walk down the stairs either? Yeah, it, like, no. a, a, a... But also look at the size of Ed's feet. How would you do that? You know, just have yeah. one big old jump down. I don't know. Yeah, it's just, it's just, it. <sighs> yeah, it's like there's a moment at the very, very last. I think the the like. The 50, 50, the 53 second mark. He is like, there's only like maybe three steps left. Um, and mm. th- I I listened to the <laughs> uh, director's cut commentary because I'm insane like that. Um, Peter Weller, <laughs> this apparently this is the only time he's broken character in the movie because he cannot get down the stairs in the same robotic fashion. So if you rewatch that scene, you will see him kind of almost skip down the stairs and it's really bizarre to see robocop do anything that's not robocop like yeah uh in the fight scene earlier in in the office uh he's trying to get back up and he's using a chair to oh. pull himself back up and you just go wow that's yeah. bad yeah. RoboCop. <laughs> oh they've had to shoot around that suit so many times <laughs> I, I, I could imagine, like, but I, I think it's, what's brilliant about it is, like, they used those, the you know, the fact that he couldn't move properly and he could only really move one way, and they really kind of leaned into that, and it just adds so much more to the yeah. character, which we will be talking about when discussing the other movie. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I think the limitations of that costume are actually a wonderful thing, because... I think it should feel uncomfortable and awkward. This is the first cyborg of his kind. And Mm. yeah, he does not seem happy. He doesn't look comfortable. It's a little bit grotesque. I think that's something we have to remember is that Robocop is a prototype. Yeah, Mm. yeah. So production Robocop is probably... If anything, it's probably going to be cheaper as well. Yeah, also too, it's like... Less armoured. And once again, to defend Ed 209 about the stairs, I've thought about lo- this long and hard. <laughs> um, I'm since, sure since, since I was eight years old. <laughs> um, Ed 209 falling down the stairs, they just... Uh, you could easily just kind of create the can in your head. Well, he's defective. That's why he's not roaming the yeah. streets. You know, it's is of course he's like this is a big problem because these are this is something that was made by suits and they don't really think about things like that. That he would have to negotiate stairs. Yeah, that feels like actually perfect executive decision making. Hmm. Well, we were speculating uh, a minute or two ago. Was Ed Two Hundred Nine actually fixed? after the uh, boardroom incident because dick jones never said like new and improved or you know the glitches have been fixed or anything like that it was just a minor setback 
but I, I don't. Dick Jones feels like the kind of guy who just won't fix shit. Yeah, I don't. I don't think. I don't think that <laughs> yeah. that is fixed at all. <laughs> In fact, no. Uh, no. We'll, we'll we'll talk about this when you ever get if you ever get to the sequel. But they actually did point out that the Ed two hundred nines were still malfunctioning. There's an there's an actual yes. scene of it. He just turned it off and on again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have you unplugged it? Are you sure it's plugged in? <laughs> See, that's the reason why I tripped down the stairs. He he ran out of cord. Ah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> you have to get the, the you have to get the new. Oh, I'd new... love to see an Ed two nine on a gigantic <laughs> power cord because. They couldn't figure out how to, to do an internal power supply. Update and I've seen <laughs> Iron Man suits like that in real life. <laughs> oh. oh, one quick note is uh, Dick actually uh, on their phone calls for Lieutenant Hedgecock, who is the same character from the mayor uh, oh, the taker. scene where yeah. like, the guys take the mayor hostage. The hostage, yeah. Yes. We've got to assume that you know, unless he's parked right outside. I mean, it could be. This is Dick Jones preparing. Um, that SWAT team gets there pretty quickly, but I'm also imagining, like, it takes a while for Robocop to get down the stairs. Like, yeah, he's, he, yeah. He, he, he would t- <laughs> that whole fight scene was actually 30 minutes, you know. <laughs> we, we just, we just, it was a time cut, guys. Time <laughs> cut. <laughs> no, it's uh, halfway through that scene, you know, they meet the Ghostbusters going up to the 42nd floor. <laughs> It's yeah. What, what if that was just the last set of stairs that we saw, and he's and Ed two hundred nine has been falling down like thirty flights of stairs. This is this is he, and Robocop has slowly been kind of just meandering down the stairs uh, for like. Oh. It's, just, it's like Hedge, Hedgecock here. Where are they? They're on their way. Ed two hundred nine somehow managed to write himself up. Finally, like t- tips himself over, gets the next set of stairs, falls down that one. <laughs> by the by, the end, Ed two hundred nine is just sighing angrily at himself. It's, 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 it's the it's the Simpsons uh, rake scene now. It's just, it's just too, you know what? If I was directing this scene, it, you know, like in an Al Robocop remake kind of thing, <laughs> that's yeah. exactly what I was thinking of. That needed. That I would I would just do. Just a really long, drawn-out scene of two robots continually tumbling downstairs. Just, <laughs> they cannot stop tumbling. Or like Ed to a nine, he's like clutching the rail, like taking one dainty step down, shuffling over, taking the daintily step down, <laughs> shuffling over. <laughs> I think that'd be a fun little stop motion project. <laughs> All you need is a set, some oh, stairs. Yes, as it's amazing. a really small set, you just repeat it over and over again. You've got a little Robocop action figure and an Ed Two and I. Just yeah, fling him down to the stairs, film it, easy. That's, that's actually not too. That's not too. That's actually what they did. So <laughs> they, they did. They, they did like stop motion for ten straight, yeah. They did stop motion for the foot part, and then when he fell, they just threw a little model down the stairs. <laughs> Oh, that'd be amazing. <laughs> okay, now I just want to see the behind oh, the scenes God. of that, actually. I'll just rewatch it over and yeah. over again. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, I've just been, I haven't done much behind the scenes looking in a while. So I, I've not seen any stuff about the special effects as much. It's, most of the behind the scenes has always been focused on the character and the drama. Like, you know. Oh my god, the there's form. a reaction figure of Ed 209 and Mr. Kinney. Oh, all, all <laughs> oh shut up and shit. Now, if you got 70 dollar dues, which is the Australian currency, uh, no. you can get that one from pop culture, apparently. Oh, wow, look at that. <laughs> I must admit, I wouldn't mind getting some of those reaction figures, but... Uh, <laughs> I've got the um, uh, Metropolis, uh, the Maria robot. Oh, figure. wow. Cool. It's pretty great. I... Oh no! I, I'm actually I myself am just saving up for the for the hot toys version <laughs> in myself the oh. the very very expensive hot toys version. If I'm gonna get anything, I'm gonna get that. A hot toys Ed two oh nine to scale with a right. hot toys <laughs> Robocop would be uh, oh yeah. god. So this is just the this is the moment in the podcast where we just start like thinking about Robocop stuff that we want and just like oh <laughs> salivating over toys yeah. Oh, I was going to say, I think this is the point of the podcast where I'm desperately trying to say anything else apart from going into the next section. No, yes, right. Uh, well, I actually do have a little... Oh, yeah. I actually do have a little tiny bit more on Hedgecock. Uh, but, like, no, uh, 
It, like, yeah, I actually did put a giant thing. Is Hedgecock on the take? He very specifically calls for Hedgecock. Yes. But, um, like, mm. the, I, I don't I don't know. I don't, because there... We'll talk, I guess we could talk about it later, but um, yeah, it's it's it, it, it does feel a little bit. Oh, they're they're very very fast, um, and they don't they don't mm. really question too much. But then I guess that could be a statement, but uh, that's neither here nor there. <laughs> well, we already know that the cops have essentially been bought out by yeah. OCP, and for lack of a better term, the real cops. Uh, not happy about this, like the cop. Oh, okay. We'll get into definitely yes, into that yeah. in the next minute because that's very more pertinent to that. So it's something mm-hmm. to definitely think about. You know, in, in twenty minutes when we finally talk about it in the next minute. <laughs> <laughs> uh, unfortunately, we have to bear witness to gaslighting. Um, oh, oh, oh. Alex, how do you feel? I feel fine, Doctor Norton. So this is minute 75. This minute begins with Robocop riding... I think it is 75. No, it's 77. 77. <laughs> 77. Oh, okay. I didn't take note of that. Uh, so you go oh, ahead then, okay. I guess. All right. the, this, is the, this is the minutes where Robocop magically undoes his fucking programming for reasons somehow. Oh, okay. 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 Fuck. Yeah. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Sorry. Um, to, to, I'll, I'll, quote, I'll quote it. He's undoing what we did to him. Hmm. Unquote. Yeah, okay, all right. Ah! Okay, here we go. Here Fuck. We go. Just all right, here because. we go. Let me let me just go ahead and do Wusa, Wusa. Okay. So my first note is problem <laughs> one occurs at zero seconds. Um <laughs> this, oh God, this is uh this happens this is okay. This is the big emotional moment of the original film. Let's. I try not to compare remakes to the original mm-hmm. film too much, but this is the big moment where RoboCop really gets his his emotions back, and it's a real emotional like like peak of the, of this whole of the whole movie. This occurs seventy seven minutes into the film. Yes, and they also already gave him emotions. Why would you give him emotions to start with, only to take it away, only to give it back to him? I know. It's, it's, it, 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 it doesn't like lo- even on a just basic writing sense of a character arc. Why would you do that? Ah, <sighs> uh, that's why I've been wrestling with this fucking remake. Why did they think this was a smart idea? Like it just almost feels like they padded it out because movies nowadays are two hours long and yes it's like this is 30 minutes longer than the original and tells less of a story watching murphy get blown up is the only thing that's been getting me through this experience (laughs) (laughs) um yeah um actually this whole scene is like I, i i was literally sitting here like going like okay he, okay, so the the real reason... Okay, we're seeing the analysis mode. Cool, great. Analysis mode, we're going to check out all I the... hate that part of the analysis mode, analysis mode, uh, yeah. is <laughs> that it says hysteria. Like, really? Are we using that word in the oh. 21st century hysteria? Cool. Well, also, too, um, why why are there... He's looking... Oh, look, there's, there's evidence... Why is there evidence left behind a crime scene that happened, like, months and months after the yeah. crime scene? Why is that stuff still there? Oh. And also... It doesn't add up to anything in the, for the rest of the film. He just there's evidence of an explosion. That's his death. So he's just remembering it. That's that's what we're doing. We're, we're remem- Yes. Okay. I mean, oh. yeah, okay. Okay. He was inside the goddamn car. How can you remember the out? Mm. <laughs> it, it's just a really clunky way of remembering. You know the scene where the real Robocop goes back to his house and he's walking <laughs> through and he's he's not remembering the accident specifically. He's just no. reminiscing about his whole life and yeah, that's far more effective and giving us new information. Yes. Yeah. It's making us connect with Murphy. Giving the character, giving the audience something to grasp onto when we finally get to this fall that we get to at the moment. It's it's all good building, not whatever the fuck is going on with this remake. <laughs> yeah, I think really what I what at least for this minute, what I, my main takeaway was it 
Okay, we got the analysis mode, so there's a lot. Of, okay, so this is we're playing. We've played a lot of Arkham City, um, or whichever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what I asked. This, the is, last like, this is this is this is this is Metroid Prime. We're okay. We're just analyzing stuff now. Um, this is for the video game that never came out. I mean, actually, no, there was one video game, but it was a mobile game. It doesn't count. Detroit become human. <laughs> Is this to try to become human? This is, oh, you know what? If uh, fucking uh, David Cage directed this, it <laughs> it <laughs> might have made actually more sense. Maybe I don't, I don't, I don't know. At least it would explain why Robo Flag has emotions. Yeah, and mm. Also, he uses four cameras to recreate a three hundred and sixty <laughs> realistic recreation that he doesn't <laughs> remember apparently. But um, but uh, okay, but then, but. Like, okay, you know how much processing power it takes just to render something like that? Is he just standing there, like, still <laughs> as, as 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 buffering in his head? Or is he just, or... Like, he's just, like, really like, loading, loading. He's got a fan in there. Oh, I'm there. sorry, this is the... His visor's got a circle that's spinning. Sorry, that's right. This Robocop doesn't sound like a robot. Loading, loading. Uh, it's, 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 I'm sorry, I can't get past the accent. I just can't. Like I like it. I like Joel Kinnaman as an actor. No, that's right. I can't get past the accent. Generic white man accent. Yeah. Robo oh, bread. God. Oh Jesus! <laughs> but this is just, just, this is just... It, it, Yeah, when you hear it, you should you should actually see the white bread. Just that that shitty mass produced stuff. Not like nice bakery stuff. No. But it is it is good at the end of the scene that the, the toast does pop out of his skull. <laughs> yes. But also, too, I even the Fuck even the movie. sound effects. I mean, okay. We do the RoboCop, the, the infamous RoboCop. Yeah. But when you don't act like the suit is heavy, it's really distracting. Yeah. <laughs> because all I hear is the servos yeah. and the actuators moving. Like just he turns his neck and it makes the loudest noise I've ever heard. And and I'm like, <laughs> at least act like the head is heavy and then we wouldn't and then then i would be like oh wow you, it requires movement i don't know why i'm thinking the you know the scene of robocop in a library or somewhere really quiet and he's like trying to feel stealthy <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> well, <laughs> can't it stop also help that robocop doesn't speak doesn't really tend to whisper unless it's unless there's a dramatic reason for it because it's always just very excuse me so pardon me <laughs> like it's just very yeah. like, that that that's my really terrible role. I can't I can't do RoboCop's voice. I can sort of I can I can. No, you're doing a terrible job, which means you're doing I, the right thing. I, I, can, I don't know what, exactly. I can do some. I can do the the. the thank you for your cooperation. Good night. You know that that kind of little simple yeah. stuff. But I can do a hell of a RoboCop three. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> oh, we'll get to that one day. We'll. Get my friends to call that. me. My friends call me Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> you call me Robocop. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, I've been thinking more about the design aesthetics of both Robocops, and there's a lot of automotive influence oh, there. Yeah, yeah. You know, makes sense because mm. obviously, what other machinery are we surrounded by on our daily basis? But I think the modern Robocop is a reflection of the modern automotive industry, where it's just. Oh, really shapeless and and smooth and i call modern cars suppositories and i think <laughs> the new robocop looks like a hyundai it's just, it I gives just... me massive oh, hyundai God. vibes I, I actually you you could argue you could argue that the first movie was that too because when you think about it it takes place in detroit in the united states detroit was the mm. car you know kind of the, the where they used to make all the cars um and i, I think the feeling the yeah feeling at the robocop time, the original gives me big chevy vibes maybe maybe old cadillac yeah yeah the feeling at the time was oh the the japanese are gonna come in with their hondas and <laughs> sorry guys <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm Japanese. That was so the uh, <laughs> time of was it Michael Keaton's Gun Kong? Exactly, yeah, with Getty Watanabe. Yeah, it took. That was a great film. It's probably aged terribly, but that was a great film. Uh, I rewatched it. It uh, it's not that bad actually. Yeah, they they do say a lot of racist things towards towards the Japanese, but that's kind of on purpose yeah because they are supposed to be from that that yeah. level of oh we hate these people but then towards the end they come together and work as a team um hence the name the term gung-ho which yeah. is what 
which is basically what that means. I like that part of the movie. <laughs> no, I just had a cursed thought is that if we did do a Robocop remake now, it would be based on a fucking Elon Musk dancing oh. robot. And oh, fuck my life. <laughs> oh. People think that was real. <laughs> God damn it. Ah. Oh. So, yes, yeah, a guy in a spandex suit with a robot head, like trying to be a ch- cheap, shitty knockoff Daft Punk. Hmm. Yeah, that's real. Oh my god, people believe anything. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Um, fuck. I think we have to give, or issue a formal apology to you, Josh, for having to endure that in this fucking film. Oh no, it's okay. Um, you know, I, I, I am a masochist at heart. I, I, I watch, I watch the worst movies. Um, see, here's the thing. <laughs> this movie is to me is not necessarily bad per se. On it, no, it's no. bad. No, let me take that back. It is bad. <laughs> But it's a bad movie, but it's not entertainingly bad. It's more mediocre. Yes, it's boring. Like, okay, I, the perfect example for me is the Street Fighter movies. Street Fighter <laughs> with Jean Claude Van Damme is a terrible movie, but it's so yeah. terrible that I can find entertainment in it. Legend of Chun Li is just a boring movie. Yeah, I can't. I. Like, there's nothing to gravitate other than uh, M. M. Bison having a ch- Irish accent. But other than that, nothing. <laughs> but this Ro- this Robocop is the same thing. It's like, okay, I'm just watching several amalgamations. Of- this is Iron Man. That's, okay, that's Avengers. No, okay, well, yeah. we're, just, we're just seeing similar scenes, and but done poorly. I'd love to know how movies like this are made. <laughs> yeah, how did this get made? Is <laughs> what... Are the producers thinking? What are they wanting as the finished product? Because surely, yeah, I know profit is the bottom line there, (laughs) but surely you are going into it going, let's make something incredibly boring that people hate. You know, what what were they trying to get at? What was the thinking? What was the thought pattern, you know? Well... One, they're probably definitely because of because of cost and the rising the rising budgets. They're always going to play it safe. Hence, why this is a remake because theoretically yeah. you have a built in audience who is who's going to want to watch it. And but they don't want to take any risks. Uh, they see what works. Oh, that works in this movie. Let's put it here. Ooh, but we shouldn't go too far. We don't want to make the audience think too much because we don't want them to get bored. It's a lot of micro, you know, kind of little, kind of, you know, uh, micro directions of, of just like, okay, we're going to, we're going to do this, but not this. Hence also too, the ballooning, I always blame the budgets on movies of why we lack creativity in films because yeah, if, if they're no one's gonna stick their neck, like gonna gonna waste like millions of dollars for you know a bad movie, and like I don't think anyone sets out to make a bad movie. It's just mm. one of those situations where we keep change making more and more changes to the original product until the point it, to where you don't under don't even recognize what movie you just made. This is why a lot of the indie scene tends to be have a lot more degree of uh, creativity or freedom, and to a certain degree even. They can do things like make uh, political statements. They can actually go a bit subversive and all that because you're never going to get that. You might get hints of that in the big franchises, but you're never go- and for a movie that is so built on satire, critique, and uh, particularly on corporatism, you're not going to get that in a remake made by a multi-billion-dollar corporation. They just want butts on seats for the dumb robot film. And that's not what Robocop is. And that's why I think it's very frustrating. Well, I think, too, it has to do with the perception of what Robocop was. Mm. I, people still think of the original Robocop as a dumb action movie. And when you tell them, no, yeah. it's not, there's actually quite a bit of satire. It's just, it's just like, oh, that, that scene is like, I, and what's, I don't know if it's great <laughs> or horrifying is how much we watch the, the satire now and like, Oh, but that's that happened, and that's still happening. And oh, oh crap! We are, yeah, we it's are still we're, relevant. We're sadly, living, we're living in the RoboCop time period. Oh my god! <laughs> I pe- I think people see I'll I I'll buy that for a dollar and go. Oh, that's the movie. It's like 
no, that's part of the critique, man. Uh, like, shit. Uh, our media landscape is very much like that. Maybe not quite so overt, overtly sexist, because, well, that was the 80s. But, like, no, our media is still as trashy as uh, that show. Yeah, I think a modern Robocop would have been, re- you know, properly done, could have been something amazing. Um, hmm. Also, I, I've been thinking about Max Headroom a lot lately and thinking, <laughs> oh, man, imagine this. So Max Headroom... That keeps popping up. Uh, uh, oh, so people are thinking of, of redoing it? No, no, just like I'm hearing that a lot in a lot of critiques. Like even the latest Maggie Mae Fish uh, mentions uh, Max oh, Headroom. Yeah, and weird. I know... Uh, He's in the zeitgeist right now. Maybe it's his time to go oh, yeah. back. But yeah, I'm thinking, imagine if Max Headroom was just, he lived on, you know, Instagram stories or YouTube shorts and there's oh, no TV show or anything, but he just pervades social media. Max Headroom is just everywhere critiquing social media and being a part of it. And I think that'd be brilliant. And oh yeah, by extension, so yeah, Robocop, Yes, it must be a film. It is trapped in this medium where Max can be whatever he needs to be at the time. But mm. I still think there's a lot of great satire to be told through the cinematic medium about the current world. I, I don't see why there was this complete lack of that. You know, Even if it was making really cheap, obvious shots, they don't really criticize the system the same way that Disney movies are kind of anti-capitalist, but lol, jokes, not really. Yeah, yeah. I- I'm amazed they didn't even go there. I- I'm trying to put my- myself in the mindset of what... that Robocop came out in 2014. Uh, this... Yeah. That, I, I think the, the big issue was, I think, because this is in the height of drone warfare, right? That's why we're talking about the yep. machines and everything. And the, 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 but we need people to run those machines because if we just let the machines take it. But the thing is, we kind of stopped caring about drones entirely. Not only do we stop caring about them, but now it's like, yeah. wow, we can have drones do all sorts of stuff. Did you see that Lady Gaga thing at the Super Bowl <laughs> where they had all the drones flying in the air? It's like, did we stop? Caring about all that no. stuff now. Oh, oh, we, oh, they're giving it away as, as for video games now. Okay, cool. Yeah, in Perth recently, they had this uh, little exhibition performance thing on the uh, on the foreshore where they had all these drones, these coordinated light up symbols in the sky, and it was just drones became such a average part of our everyday lives whereas back in the sort of around yeah 2014 2015 i mean i talk about this before muse had an album all about drones uh <laughs> robocop was all about drones like oh buddy you're back to the wrong horse no one gives a shit do you know what the perfect movie that discussed drone warfare was mm. toys by yes. robert williams Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> literally, is about drone warfare. It literally, is about that. Although, you know what's funny? Your description of Max Headroom <laughs> it, it sounds it's fascinating, but it's also dangerous because it's not too far off from the sequel to of uh, Lawnmower Man, starring Matt Matt Brewer. Brewer. <laughs> yes. No. Um, Max Headroom was a was oh, a yeah, capitalistic absolutely. critique. It was all it was all subversive and stuff like that, and of course. Biting the hand that feeds. Yeah, but of course, like any kind of subversive punk type of thing, especially during the eighties, it got basically turned into a marketing ploy as well. So, as Max, you mean when he started selling Doctor Doctor Pepper, or, or was it Coke? Yeah, it's promoting Coke, Coke. Coke. It's like, do you know? Oh, Just watch fuck. Back to the Future Part Two. You'll see yeah. what became. <laughs> yes, <laughs> pretty much. Oh, I, I wish there was a cafe eighties. I, I am mm-hmm. shocked that there isn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I remember when they released finally released those weird Back to the Future 2 Pepsi bottles, and they went, like, crazy Oh, fast. yeah, that's right. Okay, no, there is a Cafe 80s. I just looked it up. Someone oh, has, thank God. Yes. Even in the afternoon and noon? noon? <laughs> you must try the special! <laughs> 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 Oh, God. You have to use your hands? <laughs> yes, Frodo, we have to use our hands. Just like you should have thrown the damn <laughs> ring in. Oh, no, this isn't mm-hmm. Back to the Future Minute. <laughs> <laughs> Although I think we could all guess on that. Yes. Um, I think it's probably about time to uh, mosey on into the next minute. Sure. So, uh, Josh, do you have anything to plug or... 
do you want anyone to know your existence outside of this tiny little sphere? Oh, um, honestly, I don't t see. I'm I'm went into early retirement, so I don't have anything to plug. Although I do have to send a lovingly shout out to my uh to my best friend uh, Paloma, who informed me that when she was a child, she dressed up as Robocop nice. every year. <sighs> And as she got bigger, her mother would just add more tinfoil yes! to the costume. <laughs> yes! And I thought that was the cutest, most amazing story I've ever heard. Oh, so, picks, sup, picks. Paloma? <laughs> so, uh, but, so, thank you for joining us. And where can the lovely viewers find you, Courtney? You can find me at trivingdesigns.com and patreon.com slash trivingdesigns. Uh, Courtney Coulson on youtube uh not a lot happening lately because you know uh my life's just life. been ruined lol uh yeah uh fml uh all that shit rsvp rsvp <laughs> yeah uh so I, I think i did mention on the previous episode yeah I, my my house was burgled i still haven't got my stuff back everyone's fucking dragging their heels the police the insurance company but hopefully yeah. my car will be back soon um <laughs> Fingers crossed. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, still still uh, getting some podcasts out there. So, Okay. Uh, and on that uh, cheery note, yeah. uh, you, can, you can find me at Helios <laughs> Photos and Fandom Crossing on Facebook. We have Simplecast, Spotify, Google, Apples, YouTube, just wherever you podcast, podcasts, podcast are from there. I How guess. many podcasts uh, could a podcast cast if a podcast could cast pod... <laughs> <laughs> My, it, uh, it, uh, I'm just having the robo flag face now trying to compute that <laughs> <laughs> I have a son what are you talking about <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck it yeah like share subscribe all that shit get on with it <laughs> uh, and, uh, Josh do you want to do the honours do you know I don't, have you listened all the way to the end of our episodes I, I presume no one does but <laughs> I, I I have I'm usually passed out by this, okay. like, because I I, I I listen I can't listen to anything longer than than sixty minutes because I don't sleep anymore. So there's that. Yeah. Uh, so we say Robocock at the end because I don't remember oh, anymore. Actually, you were juvenile and uh, I kind of <laughs> encouraged it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, should I? Oh, maybe I should do something special with it. Hmm, you should. should do? You can add a variant. It's fine. Hmm. Oh, how about uh, I'll do my um. Oh, I know. How about this? <clears throat> mm -hmm. Well, I gotta hand it to you. What they say your name was Murphy? Was it? My friends call me Murphy. You call me Robocop. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't know I had a rip torn too. <laughs> oh fuck! I'm saving that for the next uh, year. <laughs> <laughs>